Hi, welcome back. Rob Bryanson once again for the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. And today we're going to talk about the space-time tree. And uh, if you've been watching these video blogs, you know, we do try to play with uh, the visual element of what we're looking at here to see if we can find some way to represent what we're talking about. The idea of uh, me as a branching tree now is what we're playing with in this uh, video with a little bit of, once again, video feedback, my favorite. If you'd like to read along with this blog, uh, you can go to 10thdimension.com slash blog. This is the July 13th, 2008 uh, copy of the, the video, or uh, of the blog, and the space-time tree is what it's called. The space-time tree is a phrase that was first introduced to me by visitors to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension forum. I like this phrase because it immediately evokes a useful image of what the many worlds interpretation tells us about our reality that from this particular now, there is not just one line of time. Rather, there is a bush-like branching structure of possible outcomes, and this has been confirmed by Anton Zielinger and his team in Vienna as being more than just thought experiment. Amazingly, this means that Schrodinger's cat really is simultaneously alive and dead until one state or the other is observed. The fact that the David Deutsch team at Oxford published a proof equating this at both the quantum and macro levels does indeed seem to put Everett's idea of a wave function that exists outside of time and space and which we are merely observing rather than collapsing on a very solid footing. In a blog entry called Time in Either Direction, I talked about Sean Carroll's ideas of an equilibrium state that exists outside of time and space and how the entropy-derived line of branching choices that create what we experience as time is only one of the possible directions for our universe to be viewed. Thinking of the trunk, limbs, branches, and twigs of a space-time tree gives us another way to visualize this and also shows how the move from the highly ordered base of the tree trunk to the many branches is equivalent to the universe we live in where eggs do not unscramble themselves and broken mirrors do not reassemble. Once you've moved out to a branch, you are no longer on the trunk, and so on. Now, there's another video blog you can watch uh, on YouTube, and it's available in a number of other video sites as well. It's called Time in Either Direction, another uh, one of our freaky-looking experiments with uh, uh, video feedback as well, and uh, it discusses some of the ideas we've been talking about uh, just now. The space-time tree is also a useful phrase because it immediately puts one in the mindset of thinking in a more timeless mode, where all possibilities exist simultaneously. In a blog entry called Anime, Gaming, and Cusps, I used the metaphor of the branching scenarios of video games as a starting point for imagining the many branches of our space-time tree which we would move to see if we could somehow move our observation out of this timeless perspective. Here, uh, there's a video perspective that we can watch of that one as well. If you search for the words anime, gaming, and cusps, it shows up on YouTube, and it's uh, also another one of the video uh, blog entries that you'll be able to find along a lot of the other video sites as well. Finally, one of the assumptions that I make in this project is that the fourth dimension has, as Sean Carroll also says, two directions, one of which is time as we know it, and the other which would be the time reversal version of that fourth dimension. If our space-time tree was one single trunk, that would be the end of the story. But since we now have scientific evidence that the branches do exist, the fifth dimension is where I place the space-time tree for our particular universe, as it exists in our current now. And the sixth dimension is where I place the other space-time trees, which are logically, probabilistically incompatible with our current now. In both cases, I'm using the moral, probabilistic branches created by chance and choice as ways to describe the extra dimensions, and some will insist that because of this, I'm not talking about spatial dimensions, I'm talking about temporal dimensions. In a blog entry called Hypercubes and Plato's Cave, I made what I believe to be a convincing argument for why our experience of the extra spatial dimensions can be incorporated into a temporal model, because ultimately, we are 3D creatures moving on a 4D line, and because of that, our ability to perceive any of the extra dimensions requires us to acknowledge the spatial nature of time. Without time, we 3D creatures are stuck in one single frame of our universe, with no way to witness or experience the fourth dimension above. 
So again, if you search for Hypercubes and Plato's Cave, you'll be able to watch a video uh, blog entry about that as well. The space-time tree for our particular universe then, at this particular moment, is in the fifth dimension. The space-time tree for some other version of our universe then, like the one where it's 2008 and gas is free, is inaccessible to our space-time tree unless we move through the sixth dimension to get there. The logic of such reasoning is consistent with the general idea of dimensions. Each dimension that we add gives us a way to get to states that were unavailable from the dimension we were in. And that is consistent with the most basic definition of the word dimensions that is commonly used. We're going to finish off today's video blog entry with uh, one of the songs. This is uh, uh, one of the 26 songs that were created. And uh, stylistically, it's kind of an echo of what we've been playing here with uh, copies and copies of, uh, of my head floating in space and, uh, and uh, playing with those, those kind of effects that can be uh, created by looking at time-delayed uh, versions of the video uh, that we're looking at. This song is called The Unseen Eye, the idea that there is an observer that uh, wherever you want to, to place that observer is somehow looking at the shadows and patterns of higher dimensional shapes that ultimately create the 3D and 4D space-time that we're experiencing as reality. From Rob Bryanton, this is the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Enjoy the journey.
shard Dude from any angle reveals complexity It reveals such beauty Reveals the soul So does it make a difference How we got to what you see If it's really just coincidence It's still the one this thing And we know it's the end of The unseen eye is you and I, and the unseen eye is you and I, and the unseen eye.